Bonjour. Uh, I think I've actually played other ghosts before in a couple of movies, um, but they were more almost like memory ghosts or very, you know, they didn't have a lot to do. And this ghost is very <laughs> full of life. <laughs> She's the opposite of dead. Um, she has so much moxie and, you know, I think that Rosemary from, you know, her character in the 50s was milk fed by the sort of dream of the silver screen, right? So in her mind, she wants to be like all of these movie heroines that she's seen in all these fabulous dramas and comedies with these beautiful clothes and hair. In reality, Rosemary's real life was less than stellar. It was a little bit humdrum. It was a little, it was a lot suppressed. Her husband is not treating her well. She just feels like none of her dreams are coming true. And she's in a somewhat, I'd say, psychologically abusive relationship. Um, so the ghost is fabulous. You know, she's, she's everything that she wants to be in life, but cannot be. And she gets to try and entice Courtney Cox's character, Pat, um, to try and live life a little bit more fully on the wild side. Now, of course, like the scorpion, you know, it's in her nature to cause chaos. She just can't help herself. I wouldn't say that like you always see her intent to harm or create problems. It's just like, it's in her nature. Eventually the scorpion will sting you. Eventually a ghost is gonna cause some problems, but she wants to have fun. She wants to be alive. And I just really enjoyed playing her. She's just kind of, she's funny. And she's has, has a kind of a pathos to her too when she's not being devilish. <laughs> Uh, I know they add they add some effects. Um, I mean, in her mind, she's alive, so I don't play her. You know, I mean, she'll do scares, like she'll just sort of show up out of nowhere and say stuff. And so, in those moments, she's very dramatic. You know, with the timing of like the "ha ha, I'm here." You know, um, so those things, you know, obviously I was cognizant of, but. No, when she's in conversations with Pat, once she's gotten past the initial surprise appearance, um, usually she's pretty normal, except, you know, with her vibrant personality and dancing around and doing whatever she's doing. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's why Rosemary is effective at getting Pat to cross over into this zone, which is kind of dangerous. Um, because they're both women of a certain age, you know, they're definitely past 40 and they feel frustrated with their lives and perhaps misunderstood by their significant other or um, that somehow they're not achieving their potential and that there's more out there to be lived than what they're living. And, you know, when we see Pat, we see that she's got some marital strife with her husband, although he's not He's not the abusive one like Rosemary's married to. I mean, when we finally do see Rosemary's husband, he's really a big giant guy who's pretty brutal. Um, whereas Greg Kinnear is nothing but adorable. Um, but, you know, they, they've sort of stopped seeing eye to eye, I think, you know, they're missing each other. And so I think Pat is really looking for something else in her life and Rosemary is offering it. Rosemary's offering this you know, let's live life on the wild side. Let's go back to drinking <laughs> because, you know, Pat's a former alcoholic and she's just like, cheers, you know, let's, let's drink up. Um, so, yeah. So, so they connect on the, on the woman being at a crossroads point in her life, feeling frustrated, feeling maybe not appreciated, not fulfilled, and let's go on this adventure together. <laughs>